We are back in the night house. Last week's edition saw the wombat join the kiwi and spectacled flying fox, while this week we're swinging over to the other end and bringing in platypus. Let's do it. Hey everyone, Sparrow here, and welcome to the madness that is water levels in Planet Zoo. I love my semi-aquatic animals, but damn did I spend a long time figuring out how to make this enclosure work. Probably about three hours of test builds before what you see here before you. So the pink rectangles are my water level markings. The top one, as you can see, is slightly above the level of the terrain, so that land needs to be moved up for the water to work at that level. Otherwise, it will keep giving me that stupid red obstructed air because the water is spilling out somewhere. Very much not a fan of that after this build. Once that top level is where I want it, I'm also going to dig down to the next water level so that we can place an underwater feeder that works, and so that our guests can get a bit of underwater viewing as well. This lower level will extend into the backstage where the platypus is. Platypi? Platypodes? Not sure what the plural of platypus is. We'll have a backstage pool as well. In order to make that work, I started messing around with some concrete flooring and panels because in an enclosure, animals and staff can't walk through construction pieces. Which if you didn't already know, both staff and guests can walk through construction pieces basically any other time. There are a few they can't, like curbs and barriers, and I think garbage bins. Anyway, in the enclosure, the animals won't be able to, or at least shouldn't be able to, phase through construction panels, so it won't actually matter if the terrain is completely level with where we want it. And with construction pieces, you can also hide some of the ugly terrain edges. So there will be a ramp down into this backstage pool, and then I just had to make sure that the flooring for the rest of the backstage was the same level as our land terrain on the other side of the enclosure. This meant that I needed the staff gate to also be at that level, so had to move the terrain around there a little bit to make it work, but once that was in, I could set up some glass barriers so that we could finally get the water in. So the moment of truth. Hey, it worked. I'd say I got in on the first time, but I'd be lying. This was probably the 10th pass on the habitat. So now that we've got our water, I wanted to have a waterfall on the backside of the habitat just to add some additional interest. I did want to use the water effect pieces since our console friends don't have access to these waterfalls from the aquatic pack, but after spending so much time just getting the water in, I decided to cut down on some building time with these pre-made waterfalls. So sorry console players if you're watching, but you do have this to look forward to. Other than the waterfall, this habitat will be quite lush and overgrown, but also have a sandy beach on the side because the platypuses, yes I looked it up, that is the correct plural, but more on that later, they like sand. And you can usually find them in billabongs or small shallow lakes where there is a rocky or sandy shore, so I thought that would be nice to include. Lots of rock work in this one, I used a blueprint that I'll make sure to add to the collection in the description below. These four rocks are recolored to match the dynamic mossy rocks, so I mix them together with those, as well as some of the all black lava rocks, which I've never used before, but thought would work well for a night house because of their dark color. They have a really nice texture as well, I had a good time scattering them about the enclosure to break up the mossy and faux rocks. But yeah, mostly putting rocks down to hide the glass along the walkthrough exhibit edge, there will be a big viewing area where guests can crouch down to see underwater, it's perfect for kids for once the adults have to do a little bit of work. And then we'll put up some tall rocks to break up the view before we get to the window where we can see the beach. Going to scatter some smaller rocks around the enclosure to take up space. Just need to make sure they're not sticking too far out of the ground because the platypus is a small animal and we don't want to reduce its traversable terrain by too much even though this is a massive habitat for them. Next up is foliage. So there will be tons of plants just growing out of the rocks basically. I'll put down some mulch later to make it look slightly more believable, but the platypus, like the kiwi and wombat, will have a predominantly tropical enclosure with the addition of a few grasses to spice up the sandy beach on the side. Again, double checking the heights of plants to make sure they're not sticking out of the roof, I ended up using a few coastal mangroves, fan palms, tree ferns, banana palms, you name it. And then the usual plants that look like they could grow out of rock or need little root space, like the basket ferns, staghorn ferns, kentia palms, lots of those quickly becoming my favorite plant, and tetrastigma vines. These scabola bushes are once again coming to the rescue as ground cover, they hide the bottoms of other plants and you can mix and match them with so many things. Seriously, don't sleep on those. Some more temperate plants like the cattail reeds and then of course aquatic plants like the eelgrass and hydrilla plant to cover up some area at the bottom of this pool. These plants won't impact your animal's traversable terrain if they're underwater, 
so we don't have to worry about it too much around the underwater feeder, but still better safe than sorry. And speaking of feeding, did you know that the platypus doesn't technically have a stomach? Its diet doesn't require digestive enzymes to break down food, so it passes straight to its intestine. This means they store fat in their tails instead, which is why they're so big and beaver-like. And it also means they're eating for up to 12 hours per day because they need to consume about 30% of their body weight in food every day just to survive. Such a strange adaptation. In addition to the underwater feeder, we'll be adding a submarine buoy to the water, a block of frozen fish near the beach viewing window, and the burrow nestled into the rocks on the side of the waterfall, which you probably saw earlier. Also tried to hide the water pipe in the rocks near the backstage entrance. But the beach was looking pretty plain still, so in addition to some grasses near the pebbles and overgrown areas, I also decided to finally try my hand at some puddles. There are quite a few tutorials from various creators, but I would highly recommend watching Leader's Puddle Tutorial, I'll link it in the description. And if you want to see puddles in an enclosure, I would also recommend watching Caesar Create's Grey Seal Rebuild of Elm Hill City Zoo. So the basic idea behind these is you place an emissive panel, make sure the flexi color is set to black so it doesn't glow, and then you place moss decals all around it. We'll recolor those decals to match the sand and make sure they're lying against the ground as flat as possible before placing them in the habitat. The emissive panel is slightly reflective, so it kind of looks like water from certain angles. You could do this trick by actually digging tiny pools, placing water, and then putting decals around them, but that works better for larger animals because small animals will just sink into them. But it does make the beach slightly more interesting to look at. Underwater, we're going to make sure the platypus can swim from the guest-facing enclosure to the backstage pool. Marquee beams as usual with some mesh doors, which you've seen me do before, so this is the perfect time to talk about the plural of platypus. So according to the Australian Platypus Conservancy, the plural of platypus is actually platypodes. This is because platypus is derived from Greek, and the plural of the Greek pous is podes. But this word has never really caught on for some weird reason. So the accepted plural is platypuses, as I mentioned earlier. Fun fact for you today with others to come later. Finally, we're going to move on to some guest-facing things now that the platypuses are settled in. You may have noticed this toilet block just standing over here this whole time, and that's because I realized I'm terrible at taking care of guests. And a building like this would likely have some sort of guest facilities. So we're going to turn this toilet block into an Oceanian hut of sorts to help it blend into the surroundings. Lots of Oceania pieces here, the woven palm set, driftwood poles, driftwood doors and fences, palm thatch roof, and so on. I'll bring those driftwood poles over to the glass barrier as well to bring that Oceanian element over to the platypus habitat and help set this facility into the building. Another thing to consider is guest education, so I'll place a few screens, stay tuned for the cinematics to see some custom education boards, and later also some of Lion's educational signs. Such an amazing blueprint, find it in my Steam Workshop collection below. The rest of this video is going to be very heavy on the backstage, so if that's something that doesn't interest you, feel free to skip ahead to the cinematics. But if it does interest you, please do stick around because this is the most detailed backstage work I've probably ever done. First, I'll be placing some backstage walls to make sure that the platypuses can't get out of their enclosure. I'll bring in some of the corrugated metal that we also have lining the exterior of the building, get some continuity in there. This piece that's jutting out will be a storage closet of sorts, and then we'll get some concrete pieces in there to make a fake set of stairs to cover up that ugly sloped pathway. On the edges of the backstage pool, I'll use some of the vent pieces to create drains. Just three pieces, one on each face, and then a 45 degree angle in between to create a sort of catch-all along the edge. And in the guest facing area, I'll make sure the floors are continued all the way across to the other end. Had to get a little creative with the edge here because the panels were sticking through into the water, but it all worked out in the end. The lights, as you can probably tell, are the same as in the other areas of the nighthouse, so if you'd like to see how I made these panels, make sure to check out the first episode of the nighthouse in the top corner right now. As we know, every good backstage needs clutter, and I think I've talked about this before, but it needs so much clutter to look good in Planet Zoo. Like, it's actually a ridiculous amount of clutter. Luckily, we have some backstage items built already like this sink and table from the cassowary build, I believe, and then we'll be able to turn this table into a shelving unit as well to help fill up some more space. I also have this blueprint of various backstage items that I've recolored to SEZ colors, 
So I just place this down and then take what I need from it when doing backstage areas. It's like a foliage palette but with backstage items instead, and I highly recommend doing this if you're going for a themed zoo or a zoo with a specific color palette. Saves you a lot of zooming around to find things around the zoo if you want them to match. Which didn't stop me from doing exactly that, so do as I say, not as I do, I guess. <laughs> Behind the building, I'm going to put in a lot where we'll have vehicle access, some larger garbage bins, some skips with leaves and dirt and such. This is super low-key, not particularly decorated, just going to put some corrugated iron around it and then slap a mishki on it and call it a day. But I will place a security camera just in case someone attempts to break in. To support our roof and add more interest to the backstage, I decided I wanted to create reclaimed wood beams. These are similar to the rammed earth buildings I took inspiration from for the night house, including the Montville Pavilion House and Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital. I do apologize for the clipping since I was doing this with the roof on to measure the height and angles of the beams, but to keep things short, I used a combination of the Australia planks, metal beam, anchor plate, and hinges to put these together. We'll have the vertical beam on the shorter side of the room with a horizontal beam across to the other side, a beam directly underneath the roof to support, and then another beam joining those two to create a triangle, because triangles are the sturdiest shape when it comes to bearing load. Those will go across the back of the staff area every 8 meters or so, and I'll sink a lamp into them as well so our staff don't have to be completely in the dark. Atop these beams, I also wanted to add ventilation, not necessarily because we need it in Planet Zoo, but because the tall walls and ceiling were still looking a bit empty. The ducts will run all the way across with some offshoots into the enclosures. I used to do this with the advanced movement tool, but the position snap tool is super useful when doing these. Sometimes it doesn't work properly with certain pieces, but if you're doing a ventilation system, I highly recommend it. The air conditioning units or fans are fun for adding some details, so I'll dot those around the interior as well because these walls are still looking super bland. Another consideration is lighting. I felt like the lighting on the beams wasn't enough and decided to use these lamps over key areas of the backstage. So places like sinks, bulletin boards, shelving units, stuff that will need to be looked at by keepers when this area is dark during the day. I did set the lights to a dark blue color, the red seemed really harsh and I didn't want the entire building to have that going on, but we do still want the backstage area to be darker than usual. And then for some detail, I placed some switches and light cables which will snake along the walls over to the lights and air conditioning units. A few different lines running through the night house so we don't want everything on the same circuit in case something trips. This is a very big building. It was still looking plain though, so I used the conservation hooks to create brackets over the wires to make it look like something is holding them to the walls. I think it ended up looking quite good, a lot busier than before, though I'm still not entirely happy with some of the walls, so if you have suggestions for more clutter, please do let me know. Along the back of the walkthrough exhibit, we have a transformer as well as water treatment and temperature controls. So what I wanted to do was run pipes from these tanks over to the platypus pool to make it look like there's water running back and forth. For this, I used the painted metal rod, both the thick and thin version, and then the same conservation tool hook to make it look like they're attached. There will be a blue set and a red set running through the walls over to the backstage pool. Going back to the idea of circuits and the building lighting tripping, I decided this bare wall would be a great place for an electrical panel. The back of the heater element in the habitat tab has a fun warning on it that works super well for this and then we'll decorate the rest of the panel up with some metal beams and LED caps, plus a big red button in case of emergency. Also, some cables running into the ground, just assume those are running into different areas of the building. And even after all of that, the backstage was still looking too plain for my liking, and I realized it was the floor that was bothering me. I had added a few decals when I designed the outdoor parking lot, but I ended up using the gutter pieces to outline the staff areas and enclosure gates and edges of stairs and facility spaces and so on. Not because it necessarily needs to be, though the male platypus, and here's the additional fun fact I promised, is super venomous, so maybe the keepers shouldn't be getting close to it. Fast acting, long lasting, and super painful, to the point where morphine does little to help. So maybe the safety line is warranted. But anyway, the outline will be in white except for around the delivery door where it's yellow, mostly to help the staff see things in the dark. Maybe it's a slightly reflective paint or kind of glow in the dark, anything to keep our staff from bumping into everything because that's what I do, and I have the bruises to prove it. 
So there's our lovely platypus enclosure for today. I hope you enjoyed. Please do let me know if you like the addition of the extended backstage build because I do really like doing them and would love to keep showing them off. We have one last part of the night house to build and then it'll be time to tour. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified and I will see you next time. Bye.